everybody. Thanks for coming. This is Brad Patterson and his son. Hi, I'm Glenn Patterson. Glenn Patterson. <laughs> I used to work for the park. <laughs> you did? Well, actually, it was... Um, oh, Glenn, this is all about your dad, yeah, that Brad. Comes right <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. So, Brad worked for um, the federal government for 40 years, at least. And he worked for four different presidents, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, and Nixon. He was awarded the, um, he was awarded some special award. The Arthur Fleming Arthur Award. Arthur Fleming Award as one of the ten outstanding young men in federal service. They have now changed that to just federal employees and not young <laughs> men. But they have changed. I went and looked. I was Young men. <laughs> I hope that has changed. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And it has. Um, it's now old men. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to have under 15 years of service to get it, and more than three wow. in the career conditional. So you can get it. No, I'm just over 15. Oh. oh. Yeah, but not in permanent. Oh yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, go forward. Okay. We're interested in hearing about this. Why don't I start by asking each of you to give me your names you just sit around the table. Kelly Stamen, Cultural what, Resources. Okay. Uh, Beryl Reinhardt, and I'm Kirsten's mother and visiting. <laughs> She's visiting, but she wanted to come. So I'm Kirsten Harden, and I'm a facility manager here. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Sanchez in the housing office. Mm -hmm. Robert Cannon, I work maintenance on the other side. In historic preservation. Yes. Okay. Patrick McNulty, I work here in the buildings and utilities. Deb Feninger, I'm the administrative officer. My son, Glenn. Yeah. Mick Richards, I'm in Sand Shop. Sherry Fedorchuk, in planning and compliance. Well, it's a pleasure. I'm, if you don't mind, I'll just sit. I think I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me start with 1953. I joined the White House staff right around that time. Eisenhower took office as the first. Eisenhower took office in January '53, and he brought with him a new staff, obviously, as well as himself. And uh, not very long after he was a president, he wanted to take another look at his new White House staff. Um, his week typically went every Tuesday morning was legislative leaders, every Wednesday morning was press conference, every Thursday morning was National Security Council, every Friday morning was cabinet. And when you think of how many presidents have such a regular and, and, and precise schedule of their weekly appointments, Eisenhower particularly wanted to take a look at the Friday meetings at the use of the cabinet. And um, so he asked another gentleman, a well, gentleman named Carter Burgess, and Carter asked me to help him redesign or reform this White House staff. And so we paid our attention to the cabinet. And we made some recommendations to the president about the Friday meetings. And um, uh, different. We'd have, for instance, a written, when you think of it, no other president has had such uh, an organized White House staff as Eisenhower has had. We had a written agenda for every Friday meeting. We had a cabinet papers distributed ahead of time by the cabinet. We had a cabinet secretariat at the White House, headed by a gent named Max Rabb, and Max asked me to help him as a deputy cabinet secretary. So that was my job back at the White House under Eisenhower. And then we had the meetings every Friday, Friday, Friday morning. And right after the meetings, um, we had in each department a member of the cabinet, a cabinet assistant, sort of a senior assistant to him or her, who, would, who we could work with about cabinet matters in that department. And uh, so every morning at 9, at 11.30, right after the cabinet met, we have a, a cabinet assistants, one from each department, we, and we would brief them what took place at the cabinet, who did what, particularly what the assignments were for next week, and what the decisions were for this week, an oral briefing. But right up after that, in the afternoon, I would write up uh, a record of action of the president's decisions at the cabinet table. 
and I would often go and check with, the, with people in the cabinet to make sure I've got it right with what the paper, the paper their role was. And that record of action would go to the president on Friday night, and he would okay it, come back on Monday with an okay, and that was the decision, the president's approval of my record of action. I'm happy to say he never made any changes. But, <laughs> and then every month or so, Max and I would do a summary of what had taken place to meet the president's decisions, a, 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 a action summary. So, um, so the president would, the president would know what had happened when he had asked for something in the cabinet, what we people had done with it. So that was sort of a reform of the cabinet uh, that we had for Eisenhower. And uh, uh, now, Mission 66. In, uh, in uh, early 1955, you had, first of all, a, a Reader's Digest feature story about uh, how the parks were being loved to death. And uh, here are some examples. Incidentally, these pictures were later shown at the cabinet meeting. So pretend that you're at the cabinet and you're looking at these pictures that the park service has shown what was going on in the parks to make this problem as the Saturday Evening Post had an editorial. Our parks are being loved to death. And uh, I took a look at that editorial and, and uh, pointed out, and I thought, my goodness, uh, this is sort of a mess here. Uh, at the end of the war, men had come home, formed families, and brought their kids to the national parks, and no place to camp, no place to go. Um, so uh, this was a really a very embarrassing thing for the new for Eisner administration. And uh, I looked at this editorial, and I went to my boss, Max Ryan. I said, Max, I, I think the cabinet ought to take a look at this. This is a major question affecting not just Interior, but other departments, and certainly uh, something the president ought to pay attention to, since he would be there leading the cabinet as the, the chair of the cabinet meeting. And Rob said, that sounds like a good idea. Let's go with it. Uh, call, up and call up the cabinet assistant in the Department of the Interior, Doug McKay, his cabinet assistant, and tell him that we're thinking of putting this on the agenda. So I called the cabinet assistant, I'm sorry I forget his name, and said, we're thinking of, have you seen this editorial in Sad Evening Post or Reader's Digest? This is really a really big mess over there, affecting the whole government in a way, and certainly affecting millions of Americans. And uh, so I called his cabinet assistant and said, we're thinking, are you doing anything about this? And he said, well, Patterson, you've called the right time. Our boss, Clinton, uh, uh, Connie Worth, has just established a new program of reform at the Park Service called Mission 66, because that's going to be the 50th anniversary of the National Park Service, 1916 to 1966. And here's Connie Worth. And Connie said, I have established a working group here in the interior of the Park Service people to design this reform program. And um, I had been starting myself to go to national parks. I came in the Sierra in the Tetons in 1944. And then I came to Rocky Mountain National Park in 1948 with my family. <coughs> Uh, my daughter, whose birth, 70th birthday was yesterday, um, was three years old, and I uh, had a son at that time who was three months old, and uh, we took the three years old and the three month old and put on a mattress in the back part of our old, old green dodge. And as a family, we started out to go west and came out to Rocky Mountain National Park and the other parks. Did it again, in, uh, incidentally, um, how many of you remember, any of you, you remember long ago when you took a long trip in the car, you took a canvas bag and you filled it up with water and you hung it over the hood 
with the hood ornament of your car to make damn sure you had water when you were going up the mountains. I don't know, none of you are old enough to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I still we did. And, and then again in 52 and then again in 1955. So I already made four or five trips to the parks and they invited me to come over to Interior and work with this team, Mission 66 team. And from my experience, and so we began to put something together. And uh, uh, so we uh, uh, said, okay, uh, we'll, uh, we're going to look at the cabinet agenda. And I think we, we, and we've agreed that we're going to put you on the cabinet agenda. Uh, and then they said, give us a year. Because they had just sent out, the team, mission team had just sent out a memorandum of instruction to the directors of all the national parks. Let me some of you remember this. Asking them in 1955 to take a few months, maybe the full year if need be, and make recommendations for what their individual parks need to do to bring the park service up to, up to, bed, to date. By, by one year, by 56. And they said, we expect the, the results of these memos to come into us. So give us a year, White House, and we'll be ready for a cabinet meeting with the results of these recommendations from each of the park service. And some of you may remember, possibly, any, what, 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 what your, how you started your work for that, uh, for that uh, team. And, uh, uh, so the first year, we then it was January of 1956, and our cabinet was January 27th, 1956. And here's the cabinet. Uh, here's Sherman Adams, the chief of staff, Harold Stassen, agriculture. Here's Eisenhower here, or, or, that's the president, uh -huh. secretary of state, uh -huh. postmaster General Summerfield. Budget director back here, Arthur Fleming. Uh, here's a group of pars persons, deputy chief of staff. Here's Henry Cabot Lodge. Interesting. We would invite Eisenhower would invite Henry Cabot Lodge, who was our ambassador to the UN, to come down from New York and join and be a member of the cabinet and give his views. And I'll mention in a minute one of the things he said. Here's Doug McKay, your secretary of the interior. And here's Richard Nixon. Here's Herb Brownell the Attorney General, Secretary of Commerce, and Ovia Hobby, the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare. And uh, so, um, and what we did, uh, we, uh, we had a, uh, these recommendations had come in to the Secretary of the Interior, and I worked with that group of that to team to draft a cabinet paper summarizing the things you wanted to do. The big problem was the budget. They had been at the Bureau, the Bureau of the Budget and they hadn't gotten anywhere. And now uh, there's the director of the Bureau of the Budget here. Uh, he's he's going to be listening to our presentation. And, uh, and he had already nixed the program, right? He'd already said no to it, right? Yeah, that's right. He may have turned us down. So uh, as I said, we've got this program on Mission 66 and, uh, and we're bringing now uh, this working group I came over to Interior because of my experience, considerable experience by that time, of visiting in parks, and we drafted a cabinet paper on Mission 66. I mean, we numbered the papers. That was cabinet paper number 43, seven pages long, legal size, blue paper. That was our process with the cabinet. If it was something for their consideration, it was on blue paper, legal size. If it was done and completed, and, and, and finished, it would be on white paper. So this was on blue paper. I was wondering, are any of you here histor historians? Are you? <coughs> With the Park Service? She kind of, kind, of, kind of. Somewhere in the National Park Service, you have that blue paper of 1956. I just seven, it seven, seven pages, blue paper, legal size. Uh, it was distributed to the entire cabinet. That's what we were in the cabinet, we would distribute the agenda first to them, and you were on the agenda, and then we would have a, a paper with a discussion and proposals on blue paper, and uh, it would be shown that way. 
So, so February 27th, January 27th, 1956, was our cabinet meeting. One thing we did was there's the windows of the cabinet room. We, we covered them, uh, pulled down all the shades, something that had never happened in the cabinet for, before or since. And, and we had uh, um, Howard Stagner particularly operating a, uh, a machine, a uh, slide machine, and a movie projector. And some of those pictures you saw, we put them on the slides uh, and just spread them on a big screen up here so the entire cabinet could, could see these pictures. And some of them were a lot worse than the ones that, that I showed you there. And in fact, they were so bad, well, you can see how bad they were. It was almost a breathless uh, a reaction by the members of the cabinet. Good God, are we, is, are things, are, are we bet that, that bad? Do we need that much help? And, and Connie Worth and, and the secretary were saying, yes, we do. And here's what our recommendations are. The big problem was that in January 56, just about then, the president had submitted his FY 1957 budget. And, and we, were, we were saying, in effect, on this, in this paper and at this meeting, we've got to bust out, bust open the FY 1957 budget and increase it, change it. The president just sent it to Congress. And McKay, McKay said, I've got a memo um, to the Congress, Mr. President, a letter to the Congress asking you to change, the, change your budget, which you've just submitted, and uh, put in a new... 10-year budget projection, not just 57, but going all the way on to 66, uh, for Mission 66. And uh, guess who was listening to all of it was the director of the Bureau of the Budget. Um, the president, in effect, had began to ask questions. Um, and some of the cabinet members, particularly uh, Weeks of Commerce and Agriculture, were worried about how much money being spent. This was, this was big millions of dollars that we were changing the budget. And uh, uh, exactly the Treasury particularly uh, gave us a hard time on anything that would change the budget or spend more in government money. And one, one particular comment was by Henry Cabot Lodge, I remember. Uh, I took notes of these meetings, of course. Lodge was the United States representative to the United Nations. And so he was from, from New York and come down for cabinet meetings, as I mentioned. And he said, you know, Mr. President, I find I have been become embarrassed up at the UN when I meet the leaders, the, other, the ambassadors from other nations, and the leaders from other nations who come to the UN for meetings that they, they are rec recognized and they are aware of these problems with the American National Parks. And, and he said, Lodge said, it embarrasses me to say this is where we are here in America in 1956. So I'm really in favor of this. So I mean, that kind of commentary, of course, was, uh, was very helpful to, to McKay and to Connie Worth, who made the presentations. And, uh, uh, then the president said, okay, uh, and, and we showed these pictures. And in effect, Eisenhower said at the, end, at the end, I'm glad to know this, and I approved Mission 66. And the Bureau of the Budget Director had to hear the president say, I approve Mission 66. <laughs> Which, of course, was a very good time and place for the president to say that with the rest of the cabinet and with him listening to the President's decision. My job then was to write up a memorandum, a record of decision, which was then uh, printed up uh, oh, uh, uh, on, the, on the meeting in President Eisenhower's decision. And that went in to him on the next Monday, on, on Friday afternoon, and came back on the next Monday saying, this record, uh, I approve the record. It wasn't really the decision until he said, okay, to my, right, my, my written record of his decision, so let me know that it was his decision. And, uh, uh, and so now he said, I'll, uh, 
I'll change, I'll, I'll up the budget then, the 57 budget, and we'll do what uh, Mike Kay has recommended. And then the secretary said, uh, that's great, Mr. President, and he took up a copy of something in his hand and passed it down the table. That was a, it was a final form of the Eisenhower's memorandum to, to the Congress about Mission 66. And saying, I'm going to change the budget and I approve this program, we'll do it. And uh, he handed it down the table and it landed up in front of Eisenhower's place at the table here. And uh, he smiled and said, well now I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sign this thing. And McKay said, I want you to sign it. Now! And I said, well I'll sign it, but you know, I've got to look at it. And then McKay chuckled. So, well, Mr. President, beforehand, before I came to Washington in the cabinet and the government, I was a businessman. I sold Chevrolets. And in my Chevrolet shop, whenever an enterprising looking customer walked in, I signed a contract room right there. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> passing this to you, Mr. President, you to sign right now. And the President chuckled and said, I understand, but I do want to look at it first. So. <laughs> so Kevin told me I got a laugh out of that one. And, uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, Secretary uh, McCann, McKay, and Connie Ward, Assistant Secretary named DeWeer, and Howard Stagner. I don't know, I'm not sure what any of those, those men are still alive. Um, so, uh, uh, oh, then, uh, and, and as I say, they never, and have never since, have the cabinet done movies and pictures in a cabinet meeting. This is the only time that ever happened. And I don't think it's ever happened since. And so, uh, this was in the, obviously, that gave a great deal of weight to McKay's recommendations for Mission 66 and the need for the improvements that he was recommending. And then uh, uh, Max and I said, uh, uh, then the cabinet to adjourn, and uh, then we asked the cabinet assistants, these senior people, one in each department, to come to the White House, but they did every, they always did at 12, at 11.30 after each cabinet meeting, we asked Howard Stagner to uh, put those movies on again and Connie Worth to stay there and make his presentations to the cabinet assistants as a group and repeat what they had just given to the cabinet, which again had never happened before or since. And uh, then that went out to Congress and, and you know the rest of the story. Um, so uh, now you proud to say it. I'm honored to say that you have invited me here about this presentation. I'm proud to say what you've done uh, ever since 1956. Uh, and I will bet, sitting here, that most of you are busy with, am I not right, Mission 100. <laughs> because that will be the 100th anniversary, I think. And you probably will, if the White House asks you, it will say the same thing that Connie Rose said to us. Give us a year. <laughs> one more year, and then project will be a 100 will be will be on your shoulders, and you hope hope you'll be ready for it. Well, I wanted to give you this uh, this little background. What it shows again in conclusion is the role of the White House staff. You see, he was an example of the cabinet officer who was ready to do something important. And uh, I'll, I'll just pass this around. I've written three books about the White House. I'm going to glance at this later. But, but it shows that uh, uh, the government, uh, the White House, really has a central role in what might be considered details of what the government agencies do. And Mission 66 uh, uh, would have may would have probably gone ahead but would have not have had the support of the Congress and the agencies without the White House taking a personal, personal role that some of the staff people do there. 
So, and this is still true now. As you can see when you read the every day's papers, you'll see mentioned the men and women in the White House staff who are working with Mr. now Mr. Obama. And, uh, uh, but, but uh, giving messages and instructions to the departments uh, and uh, telling them what the president wants, reporting, taking things from the departments to lay before the president. So the White House role is pretty important in this in the government today, and many of them, most of them, are behind the scenes. You don't know their names. Uh, just a few of them, maybe. They, they, they're, they're behind the scenes. They're anonymous. I was anonymous, for instance. But uh, they are a vital role in uh, making sure the government works as it should work. And I think Mission 66 is a, is a good example of that. But I, uh, I'll be glad to open this to questions if you have any. Any questions or commentary for me that, that I can help add to my, uh, to this presentation. Well, I have a question about oh, how... I'm a little hard of hearing, so... So how, how was the relationship, because Eisenhower could just ask, right? It's the presidential request for a budget. What was the relationship between Eisenhower and the Congress? Like, was the Congress receptive when oh, he... Oh, absolutely. You see, the, the next thing in Mission 66 was precisely that. Eisenhower signed the memo to Congress, changing his 57 budget, and, uh, and, and, and looking ahead for the Congress. There was legislation on Mission 66 with, that, with the budget for that year and then and, and the budget for future years. And, uh, and then in the Appropriations Committee, the Congress had to do its work. Uh, but, the, but here's the President out there uh, taking the lead and uh, giving him the pieces of paper that they, they needed and the appropriations committees in the Congress finally voted the, the money you needed. And it's still true every, every, every year. But uh, uh, nowadays it's mighty difficult. But, mm -hmm. but uh, they, I think that the, the money was something like $787 million for, for, was the, up, the up, upgrade, something like that. Connie Rittenworth had written a book about this. I don't know that any of you have any I've seen that book. I have some, some copies of some of the pages. It's on the National Park Service History website. Okay. So, now I, uh, I've again enjoyed so many times my, my trips here to the parks and uh, with my family and, and, and things you do, evening campfire sessions around the campfire with the ranger, uh, uh, hikes with the ranger, uh, we're, we're going to be doing some things this year. Uh, I've already, I did some hikes just last night uh, over Long Lake, and uh, we're going up to Grand Tetons on the way up to a, a, a wedding in Portland, but we're going to go through the Tetons, which I guess I've been there maybe four or five times. I've climbed the Grand twice. I've climbed Long's Peak twice. So I, I understand and what this means to a family, to my children. Now my son is doing what, what, what my wife and I did when, when he was real small. Now he does this with his family. But now what do I do? Answer my question. Are some of you working? Is there, is there a Project 100? Projects in a centennial. There are projects in a centennial kind of fund, you know. So there's a Longs Peak Trail that's gonna <coughs> be that might be funded in this the Project 100, but they call it centennial, centennial projects. So we put a, a couple projects in there. We haven't received verification that we have funding or anything like that. So it's not like a massive. They're looking at a conic iconic um, assets of ours, like Long's Peak Trail. Or Let's say, for instance, will Project 100, will, will, will it be in the City of the Union message next, Jan next January? I don't know. Well, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't think it's that 
organized like Mission 66. I did not put it in his State of the Union message in 56. Well, now I'm going to, well, I watch it anyways, but <laughs> now I'm really going to watch it to see. <laughs> so it's gone, so it started, we, we kind of started in, 50, it's more of an, I would say it's more of an ent entrepreneurial, like, so yeah. our, our um, centennial fund has to be matched. So it's not like, you know, in Mission 66, it was all government funds, here's this big pot of money. Well, now the politics and the fiscal climate has changed, and so I think it's... We have to have a 50-50 match. We have to have, so they want to leverage the, the, I think, the president or the Department of Interior to sell it, this is just my opinion, but to sell it to kind of Congress and everybody else sure. said, well, we're going to match everything. So if you give us, and I... We got some in 15, and they're hoping to, I want to say we got 15 million, but that could be wrong, but a certain number of million in this year's budget that could be matched if you had a project and you had a donor that was willing to match you at least 50-50. Are you talking about private individuals now? Yes. yes. Or, or friends groups. Friend or friends, friends groups. Group. So that's how, and so then going next year, we have 16, and they're hoping to do it in 17, to have this match. But they're feeling, because the support from Congress is not what it used to be, <laughs> um, and so they're hoping that this will be an easier sell to Congress. That's very interesting. These are men and women, presumably, like me and others, who have been in, as young people, been through the parks, as in their families now, They've grown up and, and, and they're actually donating private money to the park. Well, it's mostly through our, like for us, it's the Rocky Mountain Conservancy who is matching Long's Peak, um, Lily, or the, Lake. Lily Lake, Long's Peak, and, and then we're going to do the relief um, maps, new yeah. relief maps for the visitor centers. They're going to match us 50%. So it's, it's kind of... It must be very satisfying, helpful. Now, also, am I not right that members of Congress not only work in Washington, but they're from districts, right. and those districts include parks. Yeah. Am I not right? Some of those members of Congress often visit here, for instance, your Colorado people who come to Rocky Mountain Park? They were here last month. They were here. Okay. Yeah, they come. <laughs> well, that's the They've it seen be. it. <laughs> Yeah, but they see finished projects that look really nice. <laughs> no, they don't see the, the other things. They see the done stuff. Now, most of you are, 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 you are career people in the park service. Typically, how many of you are, how, how long have you been here? Just for you, for instance. Five. Five years. How about you? Four months. Four. Oh, look. <laughs> Welcome to the park service. But have you been in parks? But we've been in parks. Yeah, I've been in parks. Yeah. Yeah. parks. I started out here and left and I came back since so like eight or ten years, I guess. Okay. But I was a seasonal too, so. Yeah. <laughs> 27 years. <laughs> no parks. <laughs> eight years. How many of you have you been here? Oh, I'm, I, I'm like Mick. I, came, I was here, I left, and came back. Mm -hmm. I've been here about 27 years. Really? Okay. We're younger than we look. <laughs> Cannon, how long have you been here? Six years. Okay. About 12. Uh, 10 years in this park okay. and five more in another. Well, I'm sure that you, you are and you should be very proud of what you're doing. And now and you're probably, some of you, uh, well, your, your family's clear, they live here. But, uh, but is that like, speaking of birthdays, uh, in three days, yesterday was my daughter's 70th. As I say, she was here when she was three years old in 1948. Uh, in three days, it'll be Glenn's 64th birthday. And in four months, it'll be my 94th. Wow. Well, I think it's very interesting because um, we don't see kind of Everybody has a little piece to play in like the big cog right. and even at like on White House staff or even kind of at that high level there are unsung heroes that right. you know kind of move things forward so everybody 
you know, here kind of you have to think about that to, you know, you just do your little part to get hopefully the bigger good done. Sometimes you don't remember that but when you're going through all of the bureaucracy that we go through. Do you have a water problem here in Rocky Mountain Park? Um, a water, like the amount of water that we have, yeah. or the way that we distribute it. Because <laughs> yeah. you had a flood a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, and the flood. Yeah, well, we have se several water problems. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough water, though. I'm looking, I like got those little patches on the mountains. That oh, yeah. Like get a little smaller. And... <laughs> yeah, we have slides, we have trail damage, we have... So we mostly still, have fixed a lot of the roads. Still a few bridges out there. Right? There's still a few bridges out, but we're working on we're working on the big ones, and we got a lot of the little ones taken care of last year. So okay, we're working. Any other questions that I could? Yes. How is the Civilian Conservation Corps involved in Mission 66? Did they? come about the same time or <clears throat> no Civilian Conservation Corps of course was, was begun by Roosevelt in the depression years but the wartime the, uh, in the wartime years they disestablished it they needed the men for the military so CC and C disappeared uh, in 40 41 42 something like that yeah. and never was never reestablished that was it no I don't think so but you have volunteers who go yeah. through them. Yeah. Am I right? AmeriCorps. How many, how, many yeah. how many volunteers do you have here at Rocky Mountain? <laughs> we have 90 on the west side. Oh. 90. On yeah, the west, just on the west side. Just on the west side. side. Yes. I think we're number... You could probably double that at least. I think our park's number two or three in the volunteers throughout the park service. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's thousands. Thousands. Yeah, thousands. thousands. Yeah, that's right. We couldn't run, you know, so the picture of Bear Lake looks about the same <laughs> on most days, except the cars are newer and they're in color, not black and white. Yeah. But we couldn't run Bear Lake without the volunteers oh, who help park the cars and manage the parking. Because you'd have people, you know, stopped waiting for a parking spot in the Nice volunteers make them move on. <laughs> Not yeah. wait. Yeah. Those so are they nice get. volunteers. I'm impressed with Mission 66 in a way. They're still continuing it. You know, what was it? Clinton or Carter? For instance, if you take Alaska, for example. That was Carter, I think. He, he multiplied the parks in Alaska in tremendous change. And for that matter, just about a couple of weeks ago, President Obama. Uh, initiated two new national monuments, which is in some way a step toward a park, but the president's ability to do that. Uh, yep. And, uh, Nixon did a lot of that too, didn't he? So you're still going ahead with it. Yeah. yeah. Nixon was big into that. Connie Worth, I know, I remember one when I was at the White House too, Connie Worth was particularly interested in seashore parks. Mm. Uh, that was something new for him. Now there's a some, some motion toward urban parks yep, uh, as part of the National Park Service. So you're, you're, you know, the, 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 the motions of Mission 66 are still in being. They're going ahead. Well, again, any, any other questions? I want to say thank you so much for yeah, coming. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Glad thank to you. be here. Very good. I, I have so much. Uh, Memories, you know, with uh, my wife died four years ago. But so many memories of the parks and what we saw here. And we took that raft trip down the Snake River and all kinds of like, uh, what we did together as a family. And uh, so I'm, yeah. um, I, I still feel a, a debt in my life now to what you and your predecessors. Uh, did and what your successes are going to be doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very glad to be here.